Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode in the history of medicine and this video is all about hospitals and nurses during the Industrial Revolution. Now some of you may have heard of a great singer the late great Frank Sinatra and one of his songs to paraphrase it was that's why the lady has a lamp the lady with a lamp. Now, what are we talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Can I interest you in finding out about a woman called Florence Nightingale? Born in 1820, died in 1910. So she's right in the period of the Industrial Revolution. And she changed, yes, our key word again, she changed nursing and the profession of nursing during that time. Before Nightingale, hospitals, if you remember back in medieval and renaissance Britain, hospitals weren't like what they are today. There were places where the old people would go to be cared for, but rich people wouldn't go to be cured. No, they would be treated at home. Hospitals were not like the buildings that we know today. Back in the Industrial Revolution, hospitals before Nightingale were overcrowded filthy dirty the nurses were not trained the nurses sometimes were even drunk nightingale herself in a letter wrote nursing was done by those who were too old too weak too drunk too stupid to do anything else so nursing was a very low grade profession it was not respected today of course it has completely changed and the nurse is a very, very respected job today. Nightingale had something to do with that. She began to change things. Okay, because the hospitals were filthy dirty, often the rate of infection was very, very high. So people didn't want to go to hospital because they would often get more sick or indeed die because of the infection. But remember before 1861, nobody had made the link with germs yet. Louis Pasteur in the video we've just done. So nursing and hospitals were a problem. What did Nightingale do to change that? Well, stick around for the next 10 minutes. Hopefully we can sort it out. She came from a very rich family and her parents were not at all pleased when she said, I want to be a nurse. But against her parents' wishes, she became a nurse, 1849. And eventually she became nurse superintendent of nurses in a London hospital. So she's being promoted. But there's still a problem. It's still dirty and overcrowded. What changes things? Well, it's one of those times in history when war, normally not a very good thing, war had a positive effect on medicine. Because 1853, 1854, Britain got involved in a war called the Crimean War over in Europe between Turkey, Russia, Britain. Britain was involved, so it sent its army out to fight. Now, of course, in war, soldiers die, but also soldiers get wounded. Reports were coming back to Britain that the conditions in the hospital in the Crimean War the Barrack Hospital in Scutari, where the British soldiers, the wounded soldiers were treated, conditions were terrible. The British government said, we've got to act, we've got to do something. And one of the members of the British government said, aha, I know someone who's a nurse, maybe they can help. So they contacted Florence Nightingale and she arrived in Scutari with a team of 38 nurses, 24 of whom were nuns. Think back to medieval times, still the idea of the church being involved in medicine. So Nightingale arrives in Scutari with 38 nurses. Now, when she gets there, she sees the conditions in Barrack Hospital and she's aghast. It is disgusting. It's filthy, it's overcrowded, 
the sewers, the drains, the toilets, the food, it's all disgusting. She says, I will change it. What does she do? Well, first of all, you've got to remember that many of the top brass in the army were not pleased. They opposed Nightingale and her new ideas. Well, what were these new ideas? Quite simple. Let's clean the place up. Let's get soap, mops, scrubbing brushes. Let's clean. Let's open the windows and get some fresh air in, some ventilation. Let's try and improve this drainage. Let's get it cleaned up. Now, one of Nightingale's top nurses was called Jean Smith. So when Nightingale turned to her, she said, Hi, Jean. It's important. Hi, Jean. <laughs> Keep him clean. I've made that up. Sorry. She didn't say hi, Jean. And one of the nurses wasn't called Jean Smith. I've made that up. Sorry. But hygiene was important. So she sets to with her team and they get the scrubbing brushes and they clean it up. Remember, the army weren't pleased, so they were opposed to it. They bristled with the idea of Nightingale tidying up. Bristled. Sorry about that. No more silly jokes. So, because of Nightingale's good work and cleaning everything up, the death rate in the hospital, which was 42%, 42 out of every 100 wounded soldiers died from infection, it falls dramatically to 2%. Nightingale's work has improved the situation. This was a breakthrough. Okay. Now, in the Crimean War, there was a very, very famous battle, a very, very famous charge at Balaclava called the Charge of the Light Brigade. Soldiers on horseback charging at the enemy. The British soldiers charged straight towards the Russian cannons and they were wiped out. It was a terrible misunderstanding. And it was called the Charge of the Light Brigade. It was a very famous poem. Into the Valley of Death rode the 600. Now, you could slightly change that and say, Into the Hospital of Death strode the 38. Not quite as good, but it gets the idea over. Nightingale's Brigade of nurses cleaned up the hospital. They took on death and they won. Many of the soldiers used to die of cholera, fever, gangrene. Well, Nightingale's work is trying to get rid of them. You could say, hygiene, let's keep clean. This will cut down on gangrene. Oh, nice little poem for you there. So war had an effect. OK, now you've got to remember back then there's no television, there's no phones, there's no Internet. So the, the chief way of communicating was the newspaper. Oh, hey, oh, yes. Let's have a read of the newspaper. Let's read the news. Well, the newspapers were full of Nightingale's achievements. News spread back to Britain. And when she returned from Crimea, Nightingale was a famous person. The public raised £44,000. That's the equivalent of millions of pounds today. What did Nightingale do when she returned to Britain? Well, first of all, she starts writing books. 1859 notes on nursing 1860 she sets up the nightingale school for nurses using the 44000 pounds nurses had to have 3 years training 1863 notes on hospitals she wrote over 200 books she was a very good organizer what was in the books well Key information, sanitation, hygiene, toilets, drains, ventilation, fresh air, better diet, 
improving the conditions of the hospitals. Nightingale was a very famous person. At the same time, there was another nurse also worked in the Crimean War, a nurse called Mary Seacole. Now, have any ever heard of her? Probably not. Now, she'd come from Jamaica. She was a black nurse and she wanted to go and help, but her help was her offer of help was turned down. It was rejected. So she raised some money and went voluntarily to help. So Mary Seacole also did help in the Crimea, but it's Nightingale who got the credit, the power of the newspaper. Now, link back to the video that we've just done on Pasteur and germ theory. Nightingale is doing her work 1853-1854 before Pasteur's germ theory of 1861. But although Nightingale did not yet know about germs, she still thought keeping clean and hygiene was important. Why? What would she think was causing disease? Well, it's the old bad air and miasma situation. So although she didn't have the right cause, her suggestions, her treatments, her preventions were actually good. And that's why the death rate decreased. So what factors were involved in the story of Florence Nightingale? Her own personal qualities. She was very determined. She went against her family to become a nurse. She rejected offers of marriage. She was focused on nursing. War, the Crimean War, the wounded soldiers played a part. Money, 4,400, sorry, 44,000 pounds, a huge sum of money raised by the public. Government getting involved. Later on, the government passed public health acts. I'll do a video on that later because they then know about germ theory and realize the importance of keeping clean. But technology is also important. Yes, Nightingale's talking about better drains, better toilets, better sewage, but you had to have the engineering and the technology to build all of that. The importance of germ theory, of course. Even though Nightingale herself didn't teach her nurses about germ theory, she wanted them to focus so much on keeping clean, other doctors then knew about germ theory, so they introduced it. And of course, communications. Read all about it. Read all about it. Communications, the newspaper spreading the word of Nightingale. So you can see, yes, Nightingale does improve nursing. It becomes more respectable. Remember, I said she died in 1910, towards the end of her life. By 1900, there were 64,000 trained nurses in Britain. By 1916, she, the, the Royal College of Nursing is set up. It's still going today. And 1919, one year before Nightingale's death, the Nurses Registration Act meant that it was compulsory for a nurse to be trained. No longer were they too old, too weak, too drunk, too stupid to do anything else. No, it was a respectable profession, nursing. But what about the hospitals at the time? 1800, we had the old cottage hospitals, a little bit like the suggestion of hospitals in medieval times, smaller, local. Doctors gave their time voluntarily. The rich still didn't go. They preferred to be treated at home, safer. But the rich did begin to put money in to help these hospitals. Now, that's OK if you were working. If you were working, you paid into sort of like a little fund and then you could go to the hospital. But what if you were too poor or you didn't work? You couldn't go to these cottage hospitals. What did the government do then? Well, originally there was something called the workhouse. It was terrible. Conditions were terrible. They were so bad, people didn't want to go into them. 
So the government again begin to decide to change things. Another key word. The hospitals begin to change. 1867, the government says, hmm, let's build hospitals, or to use their word, infirmaries for the poor. Doctors were paid. These infirmaries would be paid for by taxes on local people. These hospitals were bigger. The poor could go there. And they begin to start the hospitals that we have today. But it was a very, very slow process. So there we see Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp. How important was she? Was she not at all important? A bit? Quite or very? She improved nursing. What do you think? So, hope it's been useful. I shall speak to you soon. All the best now.